Number 10, integrated concepts. Fusion probability is greatly enhanced when appropriate nuclei are brought close together, but mutual Coulomb repel, well, whatever. Letter A, calculate the potential energy of two singly charged nuclei separated by one times 10 to the minus 12 meters by finding the voltage of that one at that distance and multiplying by the charge of the other. Okay, so you got two singly charged nuclei. So just pretend that they're both you know, positively charged. We know the distance between them, it told us, is going to be basically one times 10 to the minus 12 meters. And what we got to do first is it tells us we got to find, you know, the potential energy first by finding the voltage of one of them at that distance. So basically what that means is let's just, uh, let's just take, you know, the perspective of this particular singly charged nuclei. Um, if I have a point and this can be represented as a point charge, meaning that at a point we have a charge. And basically what we know then the voltage produced by this singly point charge by the single point charge, I should say, is going to be a function of the radius or the distance away from that point charge. Okay. So we know then that along each of these, by the way, circles that I drew, the voltage are, is, is the same, right? Because the distance, I'm assuming these are perfectly centered circles, which they're definitely not, but this particular, you know, distance that I'm representing here should be the same as this particular distance all the way out to that fourth um, circle I drew. And if their distances are the same, then the voltage at those two points will be identical. Similarly, up to, all the way to there, and then all the way down to there, you know, and you could talk about any circle you like. So that being the case, what's the relationship now between mathematically, between then the voltage produced at a distance from a point charge and the distance, all right, of that point charge. So we have then this formula, voltage will equal the electrostatic constant K multiplied by the charge of that point charge divided by then the distance between basically, or the distance at a certain point relative to the charge. So in other words, right, if I want to find the voltage produced by this charge at this point, pretend the charge isn't there, then I got to know the distance and I got to know the charge value. So do we know the charge value? Well, we definitely know the distance. Do we know the charge value? And we actually do because you got to memorize this, that this, it's a singly charged item and a single charge has a charge of 1.6 m sent to the minus 19th right? Coulombs. If it's positive, then this thing's positive. If it's negative, then it's negative. But in this case, we're just basically going to be looking at absolute values more or less or magnitudes. Okay. So what I can now do is calculate then the voltage at this particular point. So the voltage at that particular, this particular point produced by this charge is then going to be equal to the electrostatic constant K, which is nine times 10 to the nine, nice and easy to remember, times then that charge value of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 Coulombs all then divided by the distance, one times 10 to the minus 12. So notice that we can just throw the sun into the calculator. So we take nine times 10 to the nine, multiply it by then 1.6 times 10 to the uh, minus 19th, and then divide it by one times 10 to the minus 12. So we get a value here of about 1,440 uh, volts. Okay, and now that we know the voltage, right, how can I now find, and what they want us to do is they want us to find the potential energy. So knowing the voltage, how do I get the potential energy? You have to remember the formula that the voltage or the change in potential amongst two points is equal to then the change in potential energy, all divided by then the charge. Okay, that is basically placed at that particular point here. So, so now in terms of the picture, if I know the voltage at this point, okay, if I know the voltage at that point, and I know the charge at this point. It has nothing to now do with this charge. Okay. If I know the charge then placed at this point, I can then find the potential energy necessary. In other words, to kind of keep it at that point. I'm going to keep it stationary. You know that these two things will repel, right? I mean, they're positively charged. So to keep this here, doesn't it take a certain amount of energy, right? That's the, that's the idea. So now to find then the potential energy here, I would have then taken the voltage that I found, and then multiplied it by the charge placed at that point. Let me call this Q2, okay? I'll call this Q2, and this thing would have been Q1 for now, all right? Because I'm going to show you something here at the end. And that's what it's saying. It says now, 
uh, if we go back to the problem, find the voltage of one at that distance, which we just did, and then multiply it by the charge of the other. And that's what I'm doing now. Find the voltage, we did, multiply it by the charge of the other, which I'm going to do. Okay, so now the change in potential energy, therefore, oops, change in potential energy will be equal to then the voltage of 1440 multiplied by the charge that was then placed at that particular distance, which again is a single charge, so it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And what do we get? Times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. And we get a value of about 2. Point, I guess 30. 30 zero. Zero times 10 to the negative 16th. And that is in terms of joules. And that's the potential energy. Okay. So what I want to do is actually do one quick thing. Okay, with you. So let's go back to this formula here and call this Q1, right? Because that's basically what it was. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mathematically then substitute uh, this piece, okay, because that's equal to the voltage, into now this formula. So what do we get? We then get now the change in potential energy is therefore then going to be equal to KQ1 times Q2 all over R, with the distance. Now notice how this is very close to our force formula, right? The only difference is that this is squared on the bottom for the force, the electrostatic force, and the other one isn't, right? The potential energy here isn't. So think about it. Why would that be the case? Okay, B. At what temperature will the atoms of gas have an average kinetic energy equal to this electrical potential energy? So they're basically now asking, so for letter B, they're saying that the average kinetic energy of the gas should equal then this particular potential energy that we just calculated. So in other words, remember that the kinetic average kinetic energy of a gas is equal to uh, 3 halves times the Boltzmann constant times then the temperature of the gas. To solve this thing for temperature, I realize that it's going to basically be temperature will be equal to now uh, 2 over 3 two-thirds, and I'll extend this on out a little bit, two-thirds multiplied then by the uh, kinetic, the average kinetic energy, all then divided by that Boltzmann constant, okay? And what I'm going to do is just simply now substitute this potential energy on in for that kinetic energy because that's what they told us, and now I'm just going to calculate. So it's basically going to be 2 times the 2.3 times 10 to the minus 16th, all then divided by 3, times the Boltzmann constant, which is about 1.38, times 10 to the minus 23, and voila. Let's get it. So we get 2 multiplied by that value, then divide it by now 3 times 10, excuse me, 3 times 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23, and I get a value of about 1.11 times 10 to the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I think, Kelvin, hopefully. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. All right, appreciate it. Uh, please remember to help us out and subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends, and we will see you in question number 11. Yay. <laughs>